Hello, I would like to welcome you to lecture 20 of 2FH3. We'll start today to talk about magnetic flux density vector. We'll talk about magnetic flux. We'll talk about magnetic scalar and magnetic vector potential. And they will give applications. Uh, this material cover chapter 7, uh, pages 301 to 310 and 312 to 316. As in the case of electrostatics, uh, when we talked about electrostatics, we talked about the vector E, and then we were able to get uh, the electric flux density vector D, uh, which is related to E by the uh, permittivity of the medium. Here, we again, we have a very strong analogy with the uh, electrostatics case. So here we define a new vector that we need, we call it B, magnetic flux density vector, and it's equal to uh, some factor mu multiplied by H. And mu is a property of matter. So every material will have a different value for mu. Uh, we call it the permeability, uh, magnetic permeability of the, of the medium. Uh, for free space or for air, this is equal to 4 by 10 to the minus 7. And actually for most non-magnetized materials, most materials who do not show uh, magnetic properties, we all will have this value 4 by to the minus 7 Henry per meter um, uh, of permeability. Um, if, if I don't mention anything in, in a problem, uh, then you should take mu as equal to mu naught. As we talked before, and we have been using this for a while now, uh, the, we can represent the magnetic field by magnetic flux lines. Uh, this, for example, here, this is an electric current. It's coming out from the page. It's an infinite wire. It's coming out from the page. We know that the magnetic field is circulating it in the phi direction. We know that. And these lines that we draw are the magnetic flux lines. And uh, if we, bo if we uh, you can see here, if we have a, a compass here, this would be the north, uh, north pole, north uh, uh, pole side, and this is south side. This is how they align themselves with the magnetic flux lines. And this is what happens as well uh, regarding the magnetic space, the magnetic field of, of uh, Earth. Uh, so we now we have a magnetic flux, uh, magnetic flux density vector B, which is analogous to D, in the case of electrostatics. Uh, and we can build on this magnetic flux density vector to get uh, the magnetic flux. So similar to the electrostatics case, in electrostatics we uh, were in, we, we were integrating uh, d dot ds over a closed service to get uh, the flux electric flux coming out from that service. Uh, here, in a very similar way, the magnetic flux is defined as the integral of b dot ds. Uh, and the, va the units of the uh, of this uh, flux is Weber's. Uh, B has units of Weber's per meter squared, and when you multiply by meter squared, you get Weber's. This is a standard unit for the flux. Uh, but there is one one difference here. In electrostatics, we have we had charges, so we can have a point charge, and the when we surround it by uh, by. Uh, by closed service, then the total flux coming out from that closed service will be positive. If the charge, of course, is positive. If it's negative, the flux will be negative. But here, because there is nothing called a magnetic charge, and there is nothing called um, individual magnetic dipole, we don't have, don't have in a magnetic pool, a, a standalone magnetic pool. Magnetic flux density, magnetic flux lines, or magnetic flux density lines are all closed lines. So uh, the, the, this must hold for any closed service. The total flux through a closed service is equal to zero. So here, the magnetic, if this is a closed service, magnetic flux lines will always enter the service and leave it. They are not generated inside the service because there is nothing called um, magnetic, magnetic charge or there is no standalone magnetic pole. So this is very, very important difference between electrostatics and magnetostatics. Uh, one other thing that we can take this relationship, of course, that the integral of B dot ds over a closed service is equal to zero. And then we apply diversion theorem. Um, diversion theorem, if you remember, <coughs> converts um, a service integral over a closed service to a volume integral over the volume surrounded by that service. So here we can integrate divergence B d volume. And this will be equal to zero for any volume V and for any surrounding service S. So this will hold only if divergence B is equal to zero at every point in space. So now this is very different from electrostatics. Electrostatic divergence D 
is equal to the row volumetric, volumetric charge density. But because in magnet for magnetic field there is nothing called magnetic charge, divergence of B will be always be equal to zero. So we we say that the magnetic field has a zero divergence. It's it's divergenceless uh, uh, vector quantity. This this figure here may help us understand why in magnetic fields we don't we don't with the integral or the total flux of a closed surface equal to zero. To the left, we could see in this one here we have an electric charge. If you draw a closed surface around it, you see that all the flux lines are leaving the surface. Then the flux is positive, and the if the if if Q is po of course if it's a positive charge, then in that case and the total flux is equal to the charge enclosed, which is Q. Uh, while here from for uh, for magnetic uh, for magnetic uh, fields so is different. If we have here this is a magnet. This is the north pole, this is the south pole. If you draw a, a closed surface around it, you will see that the flux lines are radiating out or are diverging out from the north pole in air. But inside, inside this magnet, they are flowing from the south to the north poles. And this results in a net flux of zero. You get a net flux of zero. This results in, in negative flux. This contribution results in positive flux, and they end up with overall zero flux coming out from from this one. And the reason for that is that you don't have really magnetic charges here, or you don't have standalone magnetic dipoles. So for any for any closed surface, magnetic flux lines will be entering and leaving the surface. They are not generated inside the surface, as in the case of electric charges. Also, one other important thing to remember is that, and I mentioned that already, that we don't have standalone magnetic dipole, magnetic pole. So you don't have a standalone north pole or a standalone south pole. If you have a magnet, it has a north pole and a south pole. Inside the magnet, flux lines are flowing from the south to the north pole. Outside, they are flowing from the north to the south. But if you break this magnet into two parts, it actually breaks into two into two magnets. Each one of them has a north and south pole. So again, uh, the, you cannot create a standalone pole. And the same thing will happen here if you break this one into two magnets. Again, you get four magnets here, but each one of them has its north and south pole. So and of course you can repeat that here as shown. Um, so there is nothing called magnetic charge. This is why. Magnetic flux lines cannot di diverge from any point or converge to any point, and there is nothing called a standalone pool. Uh, all all magnets that we have will have a north pole and a south pole. Flux lines flow from the south to the north inside, from the north to the south outside the magnet. So to summarize the laws that we covered so far for static fields, both electric and magnetic. These are really Maxwell equations in a static field, and I did already address that in the first lecture. Uh, first, Gauss law in integral form, the total electric flux flowing out of a closed surface equal to the charge enclosed, which is equal to the integral of the volumetric charge density over the volume enclosed. And if you put it in differential form, Gauss law in differential form is that at every point in space, divergence d is equal to volumetric. Divergence of the vector d is equal to the volumetric charge density. Now, this is called Gauss law for uh, magnetic fields. The total flux of the magnetic field out of a closed surface is equal to zero. And when you, you apply uh, divergence theorem and you write in terms of volume and you take the quantity out, you get the equivalent differential form that divergence V is zero everywhere because magnetic flux lines cannot diverge from a point. They cannot converge to a point because there is nothing called magnetic charge and there is nothing called a standalone magnetic uh, pool. Uh, the, 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 one of the laws also we have seen is that for, for, for electro electrostatic fields, uh, the electrostatic field is conservative, so the potential difference between a point and itself is equal to zero. And this means that if you carry out an integral over a closed contour of E dot dl, this must give you zero. And if you apply stock theorem, this give you to the, gives you the differential form that curl of E is equal to zero at every point in space. The last one, which is Ampere's law, and later we'll this one will be corrected because this is this Ampere's law in the static case. You'll see in the uh, in the dynamic case when the currents are changing with time, there is a missing term here that will be added. So for this one, uh, and we just covered that. 
if you integrate it for a closed contour h dot dl this gives you the gives you the current enclosed and the current enclosed is given by the integral of any one of the surfaces surrounded by c and there are infinite number of surfaces s surrounded by a contour c of j dot ds if you apply again stock theorem and the con and co equate both sides this gives you the, the differential form or the point form of Ampere's law that curl H is equal to J. So these are the laws that we know so far for, electrostat for electrostatics and magnetostatics. Now let's take a look at two examples. The first one here we have a, a wire. Uh, this wire is an infinite wire. It's, we could, when we say long wire, means it's long enough relative to the dimensions of the other um, components of the circuit that we have so you simply assume it is it is an infinite wire use expressions for infinite wire it carries a current of 20 amperes so the current is 20 amperes flowing in the z direction we have here this uh, rectangle loop and it is located in the zy plane okay um it's uh, it's 5 centimeters 5 centimeters from z axis and it is uh, 20 centimeters from the uh, z axis the other edge and its height is 30 centimeters. So it's actually 30 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And we would like to get the flux uh, uh, flowing through uh, this rectangular loop. Um, so by definition, the magnetic flux is the integral of B dot dS. So we have to integrate B over this closed surface. So we have first to get B. And B can be obtained if we know H. And we know H for an infinite wire. Then what remains is simply to integrate B over this surface uh, to get the total magnetic flux. Okay, we, we as I, exp I asked you before to do to start uh, with a, a simple diagram. So here we have this uh, current. The current is flowing in this direction. And as you know, for a current in this direction, the magnetic field here will be coming out from the page and its closed lines. And here it will be going into the beach. So it's it's closed lines circular lines uh, in, um, circulating around that uh, current. So the magnetic field here, as you could see, it's flowing into this direction, into the beach, and this is the minus x, because if you remember in the previous slide, this was y, and this one here was z. So we know that this is a minus x direction. Uh, also, one other thing, uh, the expression for the magnetic field resulting from the wire is I over infinite wire I over two by rho a phi. So a phi in this case is the is the go, is the one going into the page, uh, which is really the minus a x. But rho rho is the normal distance from the wire, and here rho in this case is equal to y. So you can see rho is the normal distance from the wire, and for any point in this loop, rho is simply equal to y of that point. So these are two very important things. So if you put this into into the context context of this pro, uh, problem then h is equal to minus i over 2 by y ax so i replace the a phi by minus ax i replace rho by y now if you know the vector h you can get the vector b because b is equal to minus mu naught i over 2 by y and the mu naught of course unless i i specify for you a different mu you have to use mu naught of free space which is 4 by 10 to the minus 7 henry per meter now what remains is to integrate to get the flux of this function through this surface. Now this surface has two normals. The first one is coming out from the page, which is the x direction. The second one is going into the page, which is the minus x direction. Unless I, I state otherwise, you should use the unit normal in the same direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is flowing in the minus x direction. Then in this case, I will use my, my unit area here as dy dz so this is dz and this is dy and the unit normal will be going into the page as well and this is in the minus ax direction so we carry out this integral uh, of course we'll integrate y from uh, 0.05 here to 0.2 here you integrate z from uh, say from 0 up to 0 0.3 obviously it doesn't make a difference because this is not a function of z so the integral will be the same for any start bound so I can start at any z and the end at z plus 0.3. I will take the start at 0, it doesn't really matter, and we can get the flux uh, going through this rectangular loop.
So as I stated earlier, I will take ds as minus dy dz ax. Now we carry out the integral over this loop of b dot ds. b is in the minus ax direction. This is in the minus ax direction. So the root product will give us 1. So the, it, the, we are integrating mu naught i over 2 by y dy dz. y will change from 0.05 to 0.2. z will change from 0 up to 0.3. Of course, this is not a function of z, then the integral relative to z will give us 0.3, as shown here. The integral of 1 over y dy will give us ln y. You substitute upper limit minus lower limit, gives you ln 0.2 over 0.05. So now we substitute for all the numbers. So uh, mu naught is 4 by 10 to the minus 7. Uh, the current flowing here is equal to 20 amperes. Z 0.3 divided by 2 by len 0.2 over 0.05 will give you 4. You sub, if you simplify all this, you get 1.663 uh, microweb, uh, microweber, which is really um, uh, 1.66 10 to the minus 6 webers here. So this is the total flux flowing out from that service. Um, and of course, you should remember here that I, unless otherwise stated, you should use DS in the same direction as the magnetic field. So let's consider a second example here. Uh, in free space, we have the magnetic field is given. It's 10 to the power 6 over rho sine phi e rho. So everything is given here in terms of cylindrical coordinates. We would like to calculate the flux crossing the surface defined by phi between 0 and pi over 3 and z between 0 and 2 meters. Um, so uh, we have a magnetic field. We would like to calculate the, uh, the flux. So from H, I can get B multiplied by mu naught. Let's set free space, uh, and then I integrate over that service. But a question: Does this redefine really a service when you have uh, phi zero by over three and z from zero to two m two meter, and you are not defining rho? Uh, this does not really define a service because rho rho should be constant on this service, correct? But it turns out that the result will not depend on rho. You can select any cylinder. This is part of the surface of a cylinder, uh, a bar that has a height of two meters and it has an, an arc corresponding to an angle of pi over 3. But rho wasn't defined, and there is a good reason for that, because the result will not depend on rho. The, and you can select any rho, select any cylinder, and the result will be the same. So we start by, by drawing a simple diagram. So I selected an arbitrary rho here for, for my radius. Uh, this angle here is pi over 3, so we can simply, uh, just to clarify, that this angle here is pi over 3. This is phi phi equal to 0, phi equal to pi over 3, and this is the height of z, z from uh, 0 up to the given uh, value for z. Uh, so ds, ds is a unit normal to that service, and here if you can draw ds, of course here it is rho d phi, and here it is dz. So uh, ds is equal to rho d phi dz in the rho directions pointing normal to the cylinder, I can start by getting b, b is equal to mu naught h, and the mu naught is 4 by 10 to the minus 7. I multiply by the expression I have, 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 6 will give you 0.1, so this will give us 0.4 by over rho sine phi rho Weber's per meter squared. This is, these are the units of the magnetic flux density. Once I have b, what remains is to integrate over this part, this part of, the, of the service of the cylinder. And I, as I remind you, I selected an uh, any rule, uh, arbitrary rule, because the result, as you'll see, does not depend on rule. So uh, we integrate this one, you multiply it by ds, which is rho d phi dz e rho, and then you integrate phi from 0 to pi over 3, you integrate z from 0 up to the height of the cylinder. So we carry out the integral as shown here, um, this is b, uh, we, we go from z from 0 up to 2, the, the given area or the given height is 2, um, this is here is why our, um, our integration here, um, of course relative to z there is nothing here is a function of z, so the integral of dz will give us z, so then you get 2, so the point 4 by becomes point 8 by. This is just an integral from 0 to pi over 3 sine phi. The integral of sine phi will give us minus cosine phi. Uh, substitute for the upper limit will give you minus 1 half. The lower limit will give you 1. Then this whole thing will give us 1 half. You multiply by 0.8 by, you get 0.4 by Weber's. If you substitute for by, you get 1.257 Weber's. So the total flux 
flowing through this bar to the cylinder is equal to 1.257. And you can see here, rho from the angle cancelled with rho in the expression. So this is why rho wasn't defined. So selecting any arbitrary rho would have, would have given us exactly the same result.